Hi everyone, welcome to Full Frame House. Thanks for tuning in. And today we are at Atlas Lens Co. And here in LA, I have Dan with me and we're gonna talk about anamorphics. Um, Atlas Lens Orion Standard Edition, right? Mm -hmm. And Atlas Lens Anamorphics Silver Edition. What's the difference? And uh, Dan is gonna also tell us about the new product they've released. Take it away. Cool, thanks for coming in. Thanks for so, having us. I'm Dan Keynes from Atlas Lens Co. And here at Atlas, we started on a mission about six years ago to bring modern anamorphic lenses to a wider group of people with classic style and ease of use that people expect from modern lenses. So um, at that time, we came out with the Orion series, which we originally had only three lenses in the Orion series, which we call the set A. That's the 40 millimeter, 65 millimeter, and 100 millimeter. T2, and they have the classic cyan blue flare that you see with vintage anamorphic lenses like Panavision C series and some other classic lenses. What's interesting is, um, you know, once people see a lot of blue flare, because more and more people are shooting anamorphic, then they go, well, you know, is that the only thing that makes an anamorphic lens special, or like, why is it always blue? Um, so, you know, it's been a really exciting last couple of years. So after that original A set of Orion series, we came out with the B set, and that's just a consistent matching family that includes the 32, 50, and 80. So then, you know, that completes the original six lens series of Missing Orion. Missing parts. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, so we had those three for the minimum viable plan for people to start with, and then added three more. And uh, those are available and shipping now whenever anyone needs to use them. So when we started, we were deeply backordered. And at the moment, we have uh, currently available stock on hand. So if people want awesome. those lenses, they're available now when, when you want them. Through the course of developing the Orion series, um, one of the things we wanted to challenge ourselves to do was make something that has a little bit even more vintage style um, with unique focus characteristics. So a lot of the things that people talk about these days with lenses and anamorphic lenses in particular is detuning or modification to give a little bit of a different look. So with the Orion series silver edition, what we wanted to do is offer people a unique take on that through an Atlas um, perspective. So we're offering 100 sets of six lenses of silver edition. And what makes those lenses special is that they have augmented optical spacings. So each each piece of glass is precision tuned um, to a tighter tolerance. So they have precision thicknesses, precision radii, um, even more so than the regular Orion series. And what that allows us to do is control an attribute of focus called through focus. So through focus is sort of a three dimensional characteristic of focus that, you know, we talk about bokeh, we talk about fall off and through focus is a characteristic that encompasses the way focus lands in three dimensions. So if I'm focusing on your face um, with a lens that has 50-50 split through focus, if I focus on your eye, you know, you might have three to six inches forward from your eye that's in focus and three to six inches behind your eye that's in focus. So if focus right at the pupil with a 50-50 split, you have a balanced fore and aft um, focus fall off. Yeah. If you have a through focus characteristic like the Silver Edition, which have sort of a 25% foreground, 75% carry through past that point of focus, um, your depth of field is actually somewhat shallower in the foreground and the background carries a deeper focus characteristic. And this is something that we find um, seems to be consistent with a lot of classic, truly classic vintage lenses like Bosch and Lone Baltars. Mm -hmm. um, some of the Cook Speed Pancros have that style of through focus with a 25-75 split. So we actually were able to control that through focus characteristic and give them uh, sort of a rich homage to vintage cinema, you know, the silver screen era, which is part of why we called them silver edition. Um, and then the other reason that we, you know, sort of embrace that classic style with the silver edition is by creating special optical coatings that allow the lenses to not only flare more, so they're more sensitive to flare, and we'll pick up um, almost like an uncoated style lens, but they actually have specialized coatings that allow them to reflect and pick up the color of the light source in the flare. So if you have a you know a yellow light, you'll have a yellow flare. If you have a green light, you'll have a green flare, and it's actually amplified more by the coating. So traditionally, coating is meant to be primarily anti-reflective, 
but this special coating that we've developed has some reflective characteristics that allow it to magnify and amplify that flare characteristic overall. Yeah, so the flare, the color of the flare is not just in the coating itself, right? That's correct, yeah. So the flare, the coating itself is actually neutral and mildly reflective with some anti-reflective properties in certain parts of the spectrum. And so because of that design, you get a very neutral or adaptive reactive flare color. So the way we like to describe the Silver Edition uh, is not only do they have their own flare color, but the way that they focus is specific, unique, and has its own feeling and vibe. So they're very expressive specialty lenses that really have a special, unique feeling. And sometimes people mix both sets together. So people will use Silver Edition with non-Silver Edition, um, depending on the project for different scenes or for different feelings, depending on the shot. And it brings in more natural feel to the frame because it reflects the actual color of the light source. That's right. And I think one of the things you said earlier is it makes it feel more cozy or more personal. And that's sort of one of the key missions at Atlas Lens Co. is to make cinematography more interesting, more personal, and more rewarding. So rewarding for artists, rewarding for people that are trying to run a business based around cinematography and making art um, and communicating and telling stories. So that's really what we focus on here and um, just incredibly proud of our team here because they really lean into that. Um, you know, this, this company was started six years ago by myself and Forrest Schultz. Um, we both see cinematography as something that desires to be more personal and that's really what we want to do is make it more unique and more personal for, for the individual. So um, prior to starting this company, I'm a cinematographer myself, and that's what drove me and led me to want to make lenses. Because uh, the thing we like to say is that lenses and optics are the intersection of the tangible and the intangible world. Yes. So it's sort of um, science, art, and magic converging in one place. All, all together. Yeah. yeah. So, so the viewer can actually see and feel what's happening in the frame, and not just like being the bystander and like, hey, this is a nice frame, this is a nice movie. We actually start to feel the emotions by connecting to the subject, by connecting to like whatever is in the frame. You feel special connection, and not, not just because it's an amorphic lens, but because this specific lens has, like even talking about this uh, through focus, like it creates the wrap around. The only thing that's that matters right now is this. You know, it's like this person is, matters right now. They speak right now. They matter right now. So it's like the science behind all this is very complicated, but it like it brings it all to like simply put. I just want to be more connected to the subject. You know, and that that's what's awesome about it. Like you can go on and on about technical specifications and everything. But like. The goal here is to bring the subject closer to the viewer, not push them further away. I love that. I mean, that's really, you know, that's really what we're trying to do. So I'm glad that um, you can feel that. You know, that's that's our goal to communicate that kind of feeling and um, empower people to tell their stories and yes. connect as humanity. So yeah. So we talked about these um, awesome, two awesome uh, lenses and features. Uh, tell us about. The new product you guys just just released, we just seen it on Instagram post like a day ago. Or oh two yeah, days yeah. Ago. You know, with Orion series lenses, these are designed originally to cover four per film format and digital formats that people would consider super 35. So when anamorphic lenses were first created, they were designed to cover a four by three, um, four per film aspect ratio, and we wanted to embrace aspects of traditional cinematography in our design when we first started. And so these aren't technically full frame lenses, but they do cover taller than traditional Super 35 formats because that original four per format is taller. Um, and that's one of the key attributes of anamorphic imaging in general. But as more and more new digital cinematography offerings come out that have full frame sensors, which is a 36 by 24 millimeter sensor, um, people desire bigger image circles or more coverage from the lenses, either to cover a sensor edge to edge or to cover a larger extraction. So you can get just an even bigger piece of whatever sensor you're using, whether it's a, you know, an Alexa LF Mini or a Sony Venice edge to edge or something like a Sony A7S III um, or you know, a wide variety of other full frame, larger format cameras. And so um, a couple years ago, we came out with the 1.6 times Atlas 
LF extender. And what that does is magnify the image circle uh, 1.6 times and you lose a stop and a third of light and it causes the lenses, all the Orion series lenses to cover edge to edge on all those larger format sensors. Mm -hmm. Even um, like uh, Red Monstro or Red Raptor, which is actually diagonally larger yeah, than full vision. frame because it's this division. So with that extender, you actually can cover um, the two to one native format and you end up with like almost a four to one ultra widescreen if you use the whole sensor, which is crazy, but cool. And there are applications for yes. that. <laughs> and so, you know, one of the requests we've had from people is, can you offer us an expander extender option that doesn't expand the image circle so much, has less of a light loss. So that's a stop and a third with the LF extender 1.6. Uh, this is a one stop light loss. So it's a little bit less loss of light. Um, and because it's expanding or enlarging the image circle slightly less, you actually get unique um, attributes that are sort of toward the edges of the, the anamorphic frame, uh, like field curvature fall off. So if you want something that looks um, special, unique, and different, this is just a cool differentiating tool that will allow you to cover full frame sensors with a slightly different look. And the other thing that this offers, um, we have an adjustable back focus built in. So not only is this um, expander 1.4 times good for Orion series lenses, this can be used with other lenses as well, zoom lenses, other primes. That's and nice. depending on the lens, you know, our lenses have a floating focus group. So some lenses focus by moving the entire lens block. And the only thing that changes depending on where you put that lens block is where your focus marks are. Yeah. So you can still get an image, it's just in a different focus mark place. So your marks might be off. Um, with lenses that have floating focus groups like the Orion series, or some of the Canon lenses, for instance, have floating focus groups and eight spherical elements, um, you actually get different focus performance. So the quality of the focus and the aberrations and the look are actually slightly different depending on where you put that lens block relative to the image plane. And so by having an adjustable back focus in this expander, you can actually use that not only as a technical tool to make sure that your back focus and your infinity position are accurate and correct, yeah. Um, you can also use this as sort of a creative tool to make the focus appear different. So you get sort of a specialized tuning tool and we, you know, we don't necessarily tell people you have to use it this way or how to do that, but it's a lightweight way and it has index markings. So if you figure out that, um, let's say you're using a Canon K35 24 millimeter and you're using it with this 1.4 expander and you find that at a negative three setting, um, you actually like the way the focus fall off looks. So you can index that negative three with your expander and then know that that's like kind of a creative look that you've developed and your focus marks are still good, but you have, you have creative adjustments. And the same with the Orions, you'll get slightly different focus characteristics um, depending on where you put that back focus and having the index numbers let you remember or, or return to a setting and these ship by default with the red dot neutralized, meaning your best back focus for Orion series lenses is at the baseline where the red dot is. And then so you have that creative control plus 10 minus 10. Um, and yeah, this will work with all digital cinematography cameras that are available with a PL mount these days. Um, won't work with a film camera, but you know, most people aren't shooting this division film cameras, so I think, yeah. it's, I think it's okay. Um, we'll, we'll be fine, yeah. <laughs> and the other we'll application with this, like let's say, you know, we're using red Komodos here today. So even though the Komodo is not a full frame sensor, using the 1.4 times expander or the 1.4 times, or 1.6 times extender, um, allow you to have different focus magnifications with your Super 35 sensor. So let's say you're using your 100 and you're like, I wish I had just a little more reach for a close up and I want to still have like a three foot minimum focus. Yeah. So like I'm, you know, let's say I'm three feet away from you and I want to go from a headshot just to just like your eyes, but I don't want to like get a different lens. I want to use an Orion lens. So I could be at the same three feet distance, put the 1.6 times extender on and then put the 100 mil on. I still have that three and a half feet close focus and now I'm magnified in. So yeah, so it's about a 160 focal length. Um, and that's about like a T2.9 or T3. Um, and so, you know, we're just punched in a little bit and we get that closer shot without having to go to a different brand of lens. So essentially with every extender or expander that you add in your kit, 
you've just multiplied your available focal length possibilities by the number of extender types that you have. So with the 1.6, that gives you, you know, if you have six Orion lenses, now you have 12 different adjusted yeah, focal lengths. And then if you have both, you have as many as um, 18 different focal lengths, which is kind of cool, kind of crazy. And um, like I said, great for not only Orion series lenses from Atlas, but other lenses, zoom lenses, prime lenses. Um, so you got a lot of options with this. Not only are you changing sort of the overall look by using a different piece of the image circle, um, you have that back focus adjustment on the 1.4 yes. times expander that gives you additional creative control. So this really is, as you said, a very versatile tool that opens up not only technical possibilities, but creative possibilities for different people as well. Yeah, and that's awesome. It's just everything is in one tool because like you don't need to go looking for, I need an extender, then I need something to, or like I need to readjust my lens to have the focus fall off, act differently, you know, and having everything like literally in the reach of a hand. Just swap the lens, put it on, put the lens back on, and it works just well. Um, awesome, Dan, so cool. thank you very much. Thank you for enlightening us into this world of anamorphic, Atlas anamorphic. Oh, thanks for coming And uh, Yeah, we well, definitely will be back. We're back. <laughs> and I have Nick with me, and he's gonna tell us what is so special about two of their new lenses, the 21 mil, and 25 mil. Take it away. Yeah, thanks for having me. So thanks for coming as well. So yeah, our two newest focal lengths are the 21 and 25, as you just said. We announced the 25 back uh, last year of October 2021 in Sydney, in LA. And we just announced the 21 and NAB of this year, 2022. These are our widest focal lengths available um, at the moment. We had a lot of requests to go even wider than the 32 millimeter. So we're very uh, proud and to, to announce these new focal lengths that kind of cover that area that people want. Uh, so originally we had only planned the 25, but through uh, designing, we actually realized we can create a 21 millimeter as well. So we were like, why not? So we, we tested it and yeah, we were able to, you know, create the 21 millimeter focal length. Now, the interesting part about these two wide focal lengths is that, um, they are the fastest anamorphic uh, Y 2125 available in the market. They go up to T2, both of them. So that was a very crazy feat to accomplish, but we did it. And it's very sharp at, at both uh, at wide apertures. Now, um, people ask me what's usually the difference between the 21 and 25 besides the wider focal lengths, right? So 25 is definitely a bit more controlled when it comes to distortion, whereas the 21 is a little bit more, uh, has more character, more funkiness. And uh, depending on the use for your, whatever you're shooting or a narrative piece, that can become uh, a definitely a, a tool to use in your arsenal. Like, do I want to have a more controlled distortion or do I want more expressive uh, distortion? Yeah. And, you know, I just recently went to Portland and there was a lot of people, a lot of uh, skaters or skate video guys who do stuff for like brands like Vans or DC. And they like love the 21 and because of that distortion. It's almost like a fish eye look. It's almost like a fish eye look, right? Um, but it, uh, it, it had that anamorphic character to it. And it didn't have, of course, it didn't, it, you didn't see the inside of the barrel. So that was something. So it's like you get a mix of both that. So a lot of people were interested in that. Whereas we had a lot of other people that do mostly narrative stuff and they liked the more controlled 25. So definitely you know, our goal here is to give the tools to the filmmakers and give them as much control as possible. And I believe these two focal lengths do a great job on the wide end uh, regarding that. Yeah, and you said you guys gonna go even wider or did I? No, 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 no. The widest we're going to I mean, you never know, but uh, 21, sorry. But um, that's right now the widest we have planned. Now, I guess if you're looking to go even have a wider aspect ratio, you can do the, you can add the expander to uh, yeah. the full frame and put the 21 and then you're gonna get some, like probably like a three to one aspect ratio around there. So that'll give you a wider look. Like it's not necessarily wider in focal lengths, but it just that aspect ratio will just- And it's not wider. gonna create the distortion. Oh, it will create the distortion with the 21. Like, yeah, with the expander, yeah. You'll still have that. You're just expanding that image onto a full frame uh, three two sensor. So, uh, whereas the 25, it's basically what the expander is doing before, what Dan was explaining. It kind of gives you that same character, but it expands it onto a full frame sensor. You're not, you're not getting more of it. You're just, you're just allowing you to get the whole image area of that 
lens onto a larger sensor area. Yeah, and 25 mil is still in prototype? No, they're both um, kind of done prototyping right now, so yeah. it's about producing them and fulfilling the orders. Yeah. So the 25, we start shipping uh, October for the first pre-orders, but both orders, we expect like if you order uh, a lens now, let's say you pre-order one now, we expect them to be delivered by um, first quarter of 2023. But something to know about these lenses is that these are uh, currently um, matched with the standards. They will match with the silvers, but they flare very similar to the standards. I was standards. about to ask that, yeah. Because yeah. uh, like if you're getting a set of standards mm -hmm. or if you're getting a set of silvers and then you want to get the 25 or 21, mm -hmm. like how the flare is going to play out. Mm -hmm. So they won't, um, you know, they're not, they're, the coatings are similar to the, the standard or the classic Orions, but you know, we do have customers that have bought silver and, and still want to buy the 2125 and they have bought, they pre-ordered them. Um, so it, it would match color wise, it's just flaring is a bit different, of course, but um, we also have a lot of customers that mix and match both the, the classics and the silvers. So, um, but you know, we do have inquiries for, for the silvers. So for silver versions, we'll, we'll get there if we get enough interest. Yeah, I mean, and depending on the project, you can literally mix and match them because like scenes are different, lighting is different. You yeah, know? of course, yeah. They can fit into like outside scene or course, yeah. late night scene mm -hmm. while the silver edition is going to fit into more like indoor. Right, like, exactly. Interior. So that's actually, you're correct, completely correct. I've had a DP that was like, they like to use the classics outside and they like to use the silvers indoors. So, um, you know, to each their own. Like I said, we're, we're here to give you those tools to, to the, you know, to tell your story or to tell whatever, um, yeah. you awesome. know, content you need to create. Yeah. It's awesome. It's the freedom of creating, it's awesome. Like even the ex expanders yeah. and everything, it's like, we're not just limiting you to, hey, this is what you use it for. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, this is the capabilities of this Correct. thing. And then just go on. Yeah. Like, Use your creativity, show us your talent, right? Of course. And then use this tool and make make better films. And, you know, we're always listening to customers and trying to, you know, uh, supply what's demanded. So that's that's our goal here, to democratize anamorphic lenses, but also, um, you know, give the tools to filmmakers that, that, you know, want the tools and they're not there. So, yeah, yeah we're really happy about that. Well, thank you very much, course, Nick. Man. Thanks, man. Yeah, and thank you for watching. Subscribe to our channel, hit the like button if you like this video. We're gonna leave the link to YouTube channel of Atlas Lens in the description. Subscribe to their channel, subscribe to, to our channel. Now to B-roll. Yes.